In today's lesson, I'm going to be addressing a question I got from a student recently about drawing text onto your chart. So this student asked, can the text parameter be referred to a string variable on the plot shape function? He wants to draw the difference of two EMAs converted into a string variable and then placed into the text parameter of the plot shape function. Now, unfortunately, you can't do this in PineScript because the text parameter of the plot shape function requires a constant variable, meaning a variable that does not change. But in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to achieve the exact same thing, plotting the difference of two EMAs to your chart using the label object. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around and I'll show you how to achieve that in this lesson. So here I am in the PineScript editor, and all I've done is create a blank script, I've changed the title, and I've set overlay to true. So let's get started with the code for this lesson. The first thing we need to do is calculate the difference between two EMAs. So here I'll create a comment here that says calculate difference between 50 EMA and 100 EMA. And we're going to give this variable a name of variable value. And this could be any variable that has an integer or float value. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get the uh, EMA of 100 bars on the closing price. And we're going to subtract that from the 50 EMA of the closing price. So now, of course, one way you could plot this to the chart is to just paste that in there, save the script. And up here in the top left, you will get your value plotted to the chart. That's one way to achieve this. But if you want the text to be drawn directly onto your chart beneath the candle or beneath a price action setup or something like that, then you need to use the label function. So if we were to use the plot shape function and we were to say, uh, draw this on every bar on our chart and set the text to, first of all, just test. If we save the script, we're getting a shape drawn above all of our bars with the text test. But if we were to change this to say two string variable value and save the script, we get an error. The reason for that is that this text parameter needs to be a constant string, meaning any string variable that does not get changed in our script at any time. But that doesn't help us when we're trying to do what we're trying to do here, which is plot the difference between these two EMAs to our chart as text. So we need to use the label functionality. So here we're going to say create a label. And the first thing I'm going to do is create our label text, which is going to use the two string function. And what this two string function will do is convert any variable or value that we give it into a string data type so that we can pass it into the text parameter of our label object. So I know that's a bit of a mouthful, but I'll show you and demonstrate how to achieve that next. So we're going to convert our variable value into text and that will assign this label text variable to the text string version of whatever this turns out to be. And next up, we need to create our label to draw this to the chart. So I'm going to just create a new label object called our label. And that's going to be set to label.new. And then open parentheses to start using this function. So this label function takes a number of function parameters. The first one is an X coordinate. And that is going to be what bar number to draw this on. So if we just set this to bar underscore index, that will just reference the current bar index on whichever bar this script happens to be running on. And so by default, if we leave this as it is, it'll just draw on every bar on our chart. And the next parameter it takes is a Y axis parameter. And we don't need to use this parameter because we're just drawing it onto the bar. We're not drawing it uh, anywhere else on our chart except for just on the bar itself. So we can just write NA in there. The next function parameter we need to define is our text parameter. And for this, we're going to pass our label text variable here. Or you could just copy this and paste it into here as well. But then this line gets really long. So I'm going to leave that as that. And of course, you could do any edits you wanted to with this string, such as adding on uh, some sort of tag or something like the siminfo.ticker ID and that sort of thing. So we'll leave that as its own variable for now. The next function parameter this takes is an X location, but that's an optional parameter. And we're not going to define that today because we've already defined our X coordinate as bar index. So we don't need to give it an X location. We do need to give it a Y location. So we're going to set the Y lock to Y lock dot below bar. So this will set the Y location to below the bar. The next parameter we need to put into this function is the color. 
So we'll give this a color of color.green. You could set that to whatever you wanted to. And we'll set the text color to color.white. So we'll have white text over a green label. So here we need to write a few more function parameters. So I'm going to start a new line here. So I'm going to put a comma on the end of this line and then continue this line on the next line with a space, one space indentation. If you do not include this indentation, then the PineScript compiler will not know that you're trying to write this line of code across multiple lines and you'll get a compile error. So always remember to indent at least one space if you're going to continue on to the next line with your code. So the next uh, function parameter that we're going to use here is our style parameter. And we're going to set this to label dot. And if you press control space, you'll get a list here. And if I start to write style, here's a list of all the styles we have to choose from. And there's quite a few. But for today's lesson, we're just going to go with style underscore label up. And then we're going to give it one more function parameter, which is our size. We're going to set the size to size dot normal. And now if I save the script, we will be getting labels drawn onto our chart. As you can see here, there's quite a few of them. They start to draw over the top of each other, and that's a problem, uh, but, we, but we can fix that later. You can also see that it's drawing the difference in the two EMAs uh, in pips. So if I add two exponential moving averages onto my chart, one is a 50 EMA and one is a 100 EMA, and we measure out the difference between these two EMAs, you can see we get around 89 pips which is what this label here says. That's 89.5 blah, blah, blah pips. If you want to convert this into points, into whole numbers, all we need to do is wrap these in parentheses and divide this by siminfo.mintick. Now if I save the script, these will be in whole numbers and they'll be in points. So here we have 895 points between the EMAs. And if you wanted to get this in pips, you just divide this number again by 10. But we'll leave it in points for now because that's not important. But before we finish this lesson, let's just tidy this up a bit by deleting any label that is not the current label. So in order to achieve that, all we need to do is delete our label that came before the current label. So now if I save the script, every time a new label is drawn to the chart, the previous one gets deleted and we just have one label drawing onto our chart. So now we're drawing the difference between the EMA variables as a string text variable using the label directly onto our chart. And there are multiple useful uh, use cases for this functionality. For example, if you wanted to draw your stop loss price directly onto your chart, you can do so here. So if I add on my ultimate pullback indicator that I have created in the past, and I come into the settings menu and turn on uh, draw stop loss labels to the chart. We'll round it to a whole number as well. You can see that this is drawing my stop loss size in pips to the chart, which is in this case around 148 pips if you round it up to the nearest number. So that's one useful application of this sort of information. And my favorite way to use this, whenever I detect a setup on my chart with a stop loss and a target price, I can draw that information directly onto my chart so I don't need to measure this out and I can get an accurate reading of the distance. If I turn round uh, stop loss the whole number off, my stop loss is exactly 147.5 pips from the closing price of the setup candle. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you found that interesting. I'll see you in the next one.